Are we horrible parents? So uh, this outlet, I think there's outlets right here on the floor. This is the very first time. What is that doing there? This is the first time I'm ever using these outlets right here. It's very exciting. So the, the thing that these go on, it took me like 40 minutes to find this thing. We finally got it. So, so this thing, you know, even though I was doing it to clean up, it was actually very like therapeutic to stack these and put them in the right order. Felt nice. Monet and the boys are going to be going out of town. Um, they leave t from Tuesday to Tuesday, and then I'm actually going to meet them from Thursday to Sunday. So today has just been crazy, like getting stuff clean and packed. It'll be uh, it'll be this it'll be this little one's first time flying. Where's the you're the veteran? Ah. Foot, oh, foot, foot cramp. Oh, foot cramp. Uh, this little guy, he is, this is like, how many times have you been on an airplane? I've never been on an airplane. You've been on an airplane? No. Yeah. We, we went somewhere, but we, but we didn't go on an airplane. You've been on an airplane before, haven't you? No, that's yeah. a long time. I haven't yeah. been on an airplane yet. It's, no. He's been on an airplane like five or six times. He's even flown internationally, which is awesome. Today is day 147 in the vlog, and we are looking at, I believe it's Proverbs 7, 8, and 9, I believe. These chapters in Proverbs continue the sediment of a father pleading with a son, pleading with him to listen to his words. Uh, his words possess wisdom and insight that lead to life and blessing. The, the, there's this encouragement of be attentive to my words and chapter 7 um, continues this discussion that we had yesterday about the adulterous woman and the, and the warning to the son of don't go anywhere near where she is but abstain uh, from her house. Then chapter 8 likens wisdom as a woman that's crying out in public for people to come to her because she has wisdom, she has insight, she has blessing, but it appears as if no one is, well, they're, if they're hearing her, they're not listening to her plea and going to her. She says, for the simpleton and the non-wise to come to me and, and I'll give you wisdom, I'll give you instruction and knowledge. And what we see in this proverb, as well as what we'll see in Proverbs 9, is this idea of the value of wisdom and how it's more precious than the most precious gem on planet Earth. And we even see here once again the fear of the Lord uh, pop up in this chapter in verse 13 of Proverbs 8. There's something really interesting happening here in Proverbs 8 because it talks about how uh, wisdom was at the beginning. Like, like in verse 22 of chapter 8, it says, The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. 
ages ago I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth. This is wisdom speaking this about herself. And, and, it's, and it's through wisdom that creation and everything was established. Then chapter 9 talks about, uh, well, it, it really talks about the value of wisdom, how important it is to possess wisdom in comparison to a folly and, and what folly produces and that sort of thing. But, you know, as I was reading this section for today, what really caught my attention was in particular in chapter 8 of how, you know, wisdom was something there at the very beginning. And then in that chapter, it talks about wisdom as being one of the most precious things we could have. And, and I think about, you know, once again, passages that we've talked about here in the vlog, like uh, in James chapter 1, verse 5 through 8, to, he says, ask for wisdom and ask believing that you're going to get it. We also see in Matthew chapter 7 that uh, those who, who seek and who uh, knock at the door that the Lord will answer. And, and if we, being evil in nature, know how to give good gifts, how much more so our Heavenly Father will give us the things that we ask that are in accordance with his will. And as I've been thinking about how generous God is with wisdom and how wisdom is one of the most beautiful things we could have, it just blows my mind at the generosity that God has towards us. You know, it, it, made me, it makes me think of people who have been very generous, you know, in my own life. And generous not just in the sense of getting stuff from them or being financially blessed by a certain person or people, uh, there's, there's a variety of forms of generosity. Uh, but I think of my parents. My parents have been very generous to me and, and my wife and my sons. Uh, my grandparents, both sets of my grandparents have been extremely generous to me growing up. My in-laws have been very generous. Countless relatives, friends, people in the church. Like, like the Lord has just been very generous, uh, has expressed his generosity through many people in my life. And when I read uh, these Proverbs, in particular Proverbs 8, I just can't help but be blown away by the generosity that, that God has towards us. And, and you might be watching this thinking, well, I haven't been, you know, really blessed or I haven't experienced the generosity of the Lord. And, and I'd ask you this one question. Have you been given the opportunity to trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If you have, then you have been gifted the most generous thing that could ever be given. Um, if you haven't, receive that from Jesus. You know, I, I think that it's important that God in him being generous is not defined by some type of earthly blessings we get while we're here on planet earth, but it really is wrapped up in salvation. And the generosity of God was culminated and ultimately manifested in the person of Jesus. And we find uh, the characteristic of generosity most prevalent through the person of Jesus and how God has been generous to us. So earlier today, I had a moment of weakness, at least at least for me, and I uh, we were we're up in. I know I'll feed I'll feed you in just a minute. Okay, hold on. And I got this, but I also got these. You know, like here. So this is what I've this is what I've learned today about Krispy Kreme. Okay. All right, this, mm. amazing. This, oh, not good. Amazing. Oh, awful, not good. Krispy Kreme, you got the pastry figured out? Get that coffee figured out, please.